Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well PHP tutorial. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the array underscore push function in PHP. This is going to push one or more elements onto a given array. Now there's other ways we can do this. It's not just using this function call. I'm going to be showing you these in this tutorial. So let's go and take a look at the code. So the first thing we need is obviously an array. We're going to create an array here. We're going to call this items. And we're just going to equal this to an empty array. So there's no elements in here whatsoever. And what I would like to do with this empty array is add an element to the array. And we're going to use the array underscore push function to do so. So let's type that out. Let's go array underscore push. And before I add any of the arguments to this function call, let's go and check out the documentation. So this is the function signature and you can see that it takes an array as the first argument and then we have multiple variables that we can supply. These are the elements that we can add to the end of this array. So let's scroll up a little bit to get to the top of this documentation. We can see that it pushes elements onto the end of the array. Here is the link to the php.net documentation. Please do check it out for other examples. We also have these parameters. The first one is the array parameter, the input array. And the second one is a mixed set of variables, which is the pushed variables. These are the variables that you would like to push onto this array. This function returns an integer. It is the number of elements in the array. Okay, let's go back to the code and start playing around with the array underscore push function. So the first thing I need to do is supply the input array. This is the first argument. And then what we do is we supply the elements that we would like to add to this array. This is going to be adding these elements to the end of the array. So let's create the second argument call. Let's just say that we want to create some fruit. So let's say we want apples in here. Underneath this function call, we're going to print out some pre tags. So just print and then pre as we've done before in the other tutorials. In between these pre tags, we're going to add print underscore R and we're going to supply the items variable like so. Before I show the output of this code, let me just remind you that all of the code is available, not just for this tutorial, but for all the tutorials in this series. The link for that is in the show notes below. Also, there is a link to another video that I've done demonstrating how to access the PHP local server via the command line. You can use this to test out your work. Okay, let's go to the browser and point to this array underscore push dot PHP file. Here we can see the output of the array. Now, remember beforehand, this array was empty and then we use the array underscore push function to push an element to the end of the array. Now the array was empty. So this is the first element that we have, which is apples. So let's go ahead and add some more to this array. Now to add another item to this array, what you could do is you could copy the array push function call. And instead of supplying apples, supply something like oranges. If you hit save and then refresh that page again, you should see two elements, apples and oranges. But of course, what we've done is we've called upon the array underscore push function again, just to add the oranges. Now we don't need to do that. We could just use a single function call and supply multiple elements. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to the code. So instead of having line four like this, what we could do is supply another argument and this will have the string of oranges. So what we could do is get rid of line four and instead have a second variable that we want to push to the end of the array. And we're going to call that oranges. So let's get rid of line four. Let's save our work and go back to the browser. Refresh the page and you'll see that nothing has actually changed. But what we've done is we've only called that function call once and we've supplied two elements to be added to the end of the array. Now I keep mentioning that the array push function call will push the elements to the end of the array. The thing is the items array that we originally started with was completely empty. 
So I haven't actually demonstrated yet that these elements get added to the end of the array. So what do you think will happen when the array is already populated with elements? Let's go back to the code and try that out. So let's say, for instance, this items array already had elements inside it. Let's say, for example, we had a banana. And then, of course, we call on line three, the array push. This is going to push the apples and oranges elements into this array, but it will do so by pushing them at the end of the array. So let's hit save, go back to the browser and refresh the page. So the banana is always the first element because the apples and oranges were added to the array by the array push function. This, as I've mentioned, will push these elements to the end of the array. Therefore, we're not overriding the array in its entirety. We're just adding elements to the end of it. As I mentioned at the start of this tutorial, the function call array push actually returns an integer, which is the count of all of the elements in the array. So let's go back to the code and see if we can output the return value of the array underscore push function. So what I'm going to do here on line three is add a variable called counter. We're going to equal that to the return of the array underscore push function call. Underneath the printr statement, we're going to type print and then we're going to supply the variable of counter. Press save, go back to the browser and refresh the page. So here we can see that we have the output of three. This is because there's three elements in this array. Much like the array count function that I have shown previously, we have a count of these elements. I also mentioned at the start of this tutorial that there were other ways in which we can add elements to the end of an array. Let's go back to the code and I'll demonstrate that. As well as using the array underscore push function, we could just add elements directly into the array. For instance, we could do items and then have open and closed square brackets like so, equal that to another fruit. Let's say, for example, pears. So what's happening here is that we're pushing these two elements onto the end of this array. However, we're also adding pairs to the items array as well. So let's hit save and refresh the page. What we've done is we've added pairs to the items array. And remember we had the open and close square brackets. This means that we're just going to add another element and it's going to work out the index for us. Also note that we've still got the number three here because the variable counter was counting the array underscore push output, not the output that includes the new element. So let's go back to the code and I'll do a quick recap. So on line two, we have an items array. This items array has a single element of banana. We then create a variable called counter and we equal that to the return of the function array underscore push. In this function call, we're supplying the items array. So this is the array with the banana and we're supplying two elements as the vars argument. These elements will be added to the end of the items array. On line five, we are manually adding a new element, which is pairs to the items array. This is automatically going to add this element to the end of the items array. And then from line seven onwards, we're printing all of these variables out. So the first one is we print the items array. So this will include all the elements that have been added to the items array. We're also printing out counter. Now this is the return of the array underscore push function call before we added the pairs element. So this will be three, even though we now have four elements within the items array. What I've demonstrated in this tutorial is how to add elements to the end of the array. But of course, we can also add elements to the start of the array. This is something that I'm going to be doing in a future tutorial.
If you found this tutorial helpful, then please let me know. Give it a thumbs up and also ensure to subscribe to the How to Code Well YouTube channel so you can get other tutorials like this as well as courses. If you've got any coding questions whatsoever, then don't hesitate to ask, but please do ask them on the coding help channel in the Discord server. Go to howtocodewell.net forward slash Discord to get your invite. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everybody. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.